Hi, this is Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews on How To, and on today's video, a slightly updated version of how to install Windows 11 on your computer. This is for all of you out there that are looking to upgrade using your existing Windows 10 operating system and keeping all of your files and data in place. Keep watching to find out more. Okay, so in today's video, we're taking a look at how to actually upgrade to Windows 11. Now, for some of you, you may want to rush in and get it quickly. Others, you may be a little bit more patient and just wait for Windows Update to give you the notification in the taskbar or actually in Windows Update itself. But yeah, I guess there's a lot of you out there that actually just want to get on and get it done. So this video is just for you. Now, obviously, you will need some things. Ideally, a PC connected to the internet running Windows 10 with all of the existing patches, updates, and driver installs, etc all done already. Preferably, if you can as well, make a backup of your system before you go ahead and make any changes. Obviously, things can and do go wrong, so make sure you've got a full backup of your operating system as it stands. If you haven't, then potentially if things go wrong, that's it. You're uh, kind of left out in the cold. So definitely make a backup if you can. If you're not sure how to make a backup, then you can check out the video up here, and we'll show you how to do a quick, easy, dirty backup in Macrium Reflect. Now, obviously, other things you'll need, connection to the internet, as we said, and you don't need a USB driver or anything like that, so literally all you need, PC, connected to the internet, and at least 10 gigabytes of spare room on your hard disk drive. Ideally, obviously, if you're doing this on your main C drive, then really you should have more than that free anyway, depending on the size of your drive. But anyway, I'm yapping on too much, let's get straight into it. So this is our donor system. This is a Windows 10 installation, a relatively fresh one. We've got a few things on here, and I have just gone in and done all the latest updates. So we go into the settings cog and go into update and security. We do get a message there to say that there are updates available. So there's the Windows 10 version 21H1 available. And also we get this mark here, which says this PC currently doesn't meet all the system requirements for Windows 11. Get the details, click on PC check. So what I've done already, I've already clicked on that just to save time, but you can just click on that and it will download and install. If we go to PC health check, we'll find out exactly why we can't at the moment. So let's we'll click on check now. And essentially it's because our TPM 2.0 isn't enabled. So we're gonna quickly go into the BIOS to remedy that. I'm actually gonna install that download as well. We'll get that done. So yeah, we're all up to date there, excellent. So let's shut down the PC and we'll configure our TPM. In order to do this, we need to go into the BIOS. So there's various ways you can do that. Um, I'm just gonna click on restart and tap the delete key to get into the BIOS on reboot. So we're into our BIOS now, so let's go into settings and we'll go into security. Obviously, your system may look a little bit different. We'll go into trusted computing and security device support. We'll just click enable and we're using the AMD FTPM switch, which is built in. So that's all we need to do. So we can save and exit there on MSI board. It's nice and easy. If you just go to exit, it asks you if you want to do that anyway. So hit yes, and then we can reboot back into Windows 10. So there we are, back into Windows, and it says your PC doesn't currently meet all the system requirements. So let's head back over into PC Health Check, do a quick check, and there we go. So this PC now meets the Windows 11 requirements. Sometimes you do actually have to open the PC Health Check app just to make this section kind of uh, reset itself. Nope, still didn't want to do it. Oh well, so we'll ignore that. Maybe that's a little bug of the system. So what we want to do now is to head over to the uh, Microsoft site and we want the Windows 11 download. Ironically, because it's being Microsoft's own search engine, trying to get the Windows 11 download doesn't actually take you to the right place. It takes you somewhere else. So we want the link which is a little bit lower down. So this will be in the video description. So Microsoft.com, software download, Windows 11, etc. So in this bit, there's three options. So you've got the installation assistant, which is the one we're going to be using. You've got the create Windows 11 installation media. So this is for standalone or clean installs or for putting onto a Windows DVD or some sort of disk image. Uh, same one there, so same sort of deal there. So installation media, disk image if you want those, but installation assistant is the one we're gonna wanna do. So you can if you want to, click on before you start just to make sure that uh, everything in there is okay and you're updated, etc., etc., and your PC meets all the requirements. So we're gonna go ahead and click on download now. And uh, once that's up there, click on open file and you'll get user account control come up for the Windows installation assistant. So hit yes. And we can minimize this window in the background. So install Windows 11. And again, you have to go through the usual stuff, read through all of the uh, the blurb here. If you're happy, just click accept and install. 
If you click decline, it will take you back out to the desktop and will not allow you to install. So yeah, not much choice really. Agree or get out. So now it's going to go ahead and download the Windows 11 setup files in the background. So we'll uh, fast forward through this part of the process. Okay, so when it gets to the end of the download section, it will then go ahead and verify the data in the download, just to make sure there's no corruption or anything like that, which potentially can happen with digital downloads. Step three of three, this is the one where you don't want to be touching your PC or doing anything. So as it says there on the screen, it's okay to keep using your PC. I personally would recommend against it, just in case, you never know. Um, when they say it's okay to keep using your PC, that probably means, uh, yeah, just maybe some casual web browsing. I wouldn't be doing any uh, rendering or gameplay, anything like that. Essentially, leave it to do what it needs to do. It does say there, it will uh, restart your PC about 30 minutes after we've reached 100% on the screen. So uh, yeah, I'll just let it do its thing. You should find that a little bit quicker. So we're gonna let it go ahead and do that. And we'll come back when there's something a little bit more exciting to report on. Okay, so the next part of this is, uh, this is what you'll get on your screen. So your PC needs to restart to install Windows 11. Please save your work, plug in your PC. So that is if you're on a laptop or some kind of portable device, leave it turned on. If you choose restart later, it will automatically restart when you're not using your PC. So you don't have to do it straight away. Um, it will kind of automatically try and do it after the 30 minutes countdown. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and save you the agony of waiting for 30 minutes and I'm gonna click on restart now. There's a nice little message there saying you're about to be signed out. Windows installation assistant will reboot your device to complete the install. So just be a bit patient, depending on how many programs you've got running in the background at the current time, you may find the restart takes slightly longer. I should also apologize for the noise of the fans on this PC. Unfortunately, they're not controllable in the BIOS at all. They're fixed RPM fans, so they may be a little bit noisy. I do apologize for headphone users who may be distracted by them. So now it's going to go into the uh, the main install. So there you say it's working on updates. Please keep your computer on and your computer may restart a few times. So this may take a little while. Just uh, be patient, let it do its thing. And we'll uh, chop out segments of this to save you uh, having to go through it all. Okay, so now we've got a message on the screen saying this may take a few minutes. Uh, yeah. That's potentially an understatement. So yeah, don't turn off your PC, don't do anything, just leave it as is. And again, just be patient. And there we go. All done, back up to the Windows desktop. Didn't ask us for any other things like login details or anything like that. So none of that nagware, just gone into Windows 11. Which is, uh, yeah, that's pretty nice. As you see, we've got our new start menu now. Of course, if you want to, you can modify some of these things. You can move your start menu settings to the left if you want to, to keep it in keeping with Windows 10, that sort of thing. I'm not gonna go through all the individual bits on this. It's uh, a little bit pointless. You don't really need to do anything else other than that now. You've got the Windows Microsoft Store, which was now accessible, so you can download all your favorite apps. And actually, starting to get pretty decent in here now. Lots of things in there, apps, games, films, obviously, Prime Video, all that kind of stuff as well. Some very useful things, actually. Surprisingly, Windows Store used to be a horrendous abomination, but yeah, it is getting better. And hopefully soon we'll have some Android apps in there as well, which will be excellent. Obviously, you get things like Discord as well, should you wish to, which is a very neat intro. So if you are trying this on your own PC and you're struggling and you need someone to hold your hand a little bit, then feel free to pop over to our free-to-use Discord app server and you can chat to either myself or some of the other experts and community members, and we can try and help you with your PC problems. Well, I think that's gonna pretty much wrap this one up. We've got it all fully installed. Actually, one thing I will check, I wanna see what the activation status is like, because this could be the hack of the century because this PC wasn't actually activated previously. Ah, yeah, Windows still isn't activated, so yeah, no change there. So we do need to get a Windows license key for that, so I'll be heading over to premiumcdkeys.com. I will most likely be using the discount code Mike's Unboxing to get myself 7.5% off the already ridiculously cheap price. But obviously for the majority of you watching this, you're upgrading for an existing Windows 10 installation, which potentially you've already got licensed. And you've also got a license code active. So yeah, you may not need that, but if you have the links will be in the video description. So there we go, all done and dusted. Actually, particularly easy. I'm impressed how quickly that went through. 
the final bit where it just basically popped up to the Windows desktop and was ready to use. That is brilliant. I was expecting the whole host of the Windows 10 stroke Windows 11 nagware, sign into your Microsoft account, sign into this, telemetry this, telemetry that. But no, actually really good, very impressed, took me by surprise. So anyway, hopefully this video has been helpful to you. If it has, don't forget to smash the like button. If you're new here and this is the first time you've seen content from Mugs Unboxing, then maybe hit the subscribe button and the channel icon and you'll get more content in your daily feed. So that's going to wrap this one up. I've been Mike, this is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and hopefully we'll catch you in the very next video. Thanks for watching.